Hello chess lovers, I have a very beautiful game for you played at Tata Steel Challengers 2018. With the white pieces is playing Vidit Gurjathi and his opponent is Mikhail Krasenkov. Vidit started with e4 and c5 by Krasenkov, Sicilian defense, knight f3, e6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, knight c6, we see the 4 knights variation and knight takes c6. Another very popular alternative is playing knight b5, if d6 then bishop f4, going for Sveshnikov variation. But instead, after knight c6, we see knight takes c6, b takes c6, e5, knight d5, knight e4, queen c7, taking the pawn on e5, and after f4, black is now placing the queen on b6 square using the weakened g1 a7 diagonal. c4 trying to kick away the knight from this perfect outpost on d5 square, but instead of moving away the knight, black is first giving a check from b4 square. King e2. This is a popular theory and there is nothing wrong with king e2 move. By the way, if you play something like bishop d2 instead of moving your king, then black can play queen e3 check and after this forced line, in the end of the day, you will lose your pawn on f4. That's why after bishop b4 check, we see king e2. Still, the knight on d5 is under attack and black is counter-attacking white knight by pushing the f-pawn. White is capturing m passant, knight takes f6, bishop e3, queen d8, knight d6 check. And after bishop takes knight, queen takes bishop, white is starting to exploit the weakened dark squares. This queen is just on black's throat, not allowing black king to castle kingside. Queen is 7, but white is not going to move away this queen. Here comes bishop c5, the bishop is coming to support white queen. Now it was better to exchange the queens and make life simpler. Bishop a3, king f7, and then black can push the d pawn. This variation is of course better for black, but instead after bishop c5 we see queen f7, black is still keeping alive the queen, but this of course favors white. But in this position, Vidit came up with a mind-blowing idea, he played king e3, not allowing any possible knight e4 moves, not allowing the exchange of knight with the bishop or queen h5 checks, and at the same time white is opening up the bishop's path. But actually the king on e3 looks spectacular, this reminds me of Alpha Zero's game against Stockfish 8, where in French defense Alpha Zero placed the king on e3 square. We see g5, a very dubious decision, well it was better to play knight g4 check, if king f3 then h5, if h3 then rook h6, you can't capture on g4 because after h takes g4 check you will lose your rook, also black has some e5 ideas, but instead after king e3 we see g5 and this is becoming more and more unbearable for black, bishop e2, g4, well if you capture on f4 then white can recapture with a queen, later white can use this weakened f file. Instead after bishop e2 we see g4 trying to keep the king side closed. Rook c1, h5, rook c3, queen g7, bishop d3, king f7, king d2, rook e8, rook e1, queen h6 and king c2, finally white is bringing the king onto a safe square. Now once the white king is in safety, white will start attacking black king. a5, now comes rook e5. White wants to bring the rook onto the g5 square, this is going to be terrible for black. Knight h7, here comes rook f5 check, using the fact that the pawn on e6 is pinned. King g8, queen e5, and in this position, Krasenkov resigned. Well, white is now threatening to capture on h5. 
Well, actually, black could prolong the game by capturing on f5, though after queen takes e8 check, knight f8, bishop takes f8, this is going to be an easy win. Black king is exposed, also there are too many weaknesses in black's camp and white will easily win the game. If you like this crazy game, don't forget to give the thumbs up or subscribe to my channel, more games are coming. Good luck.